I am Amber Duncan. I am Zoe Moore. My first child, Reagan, was actually born and eventually was diagnosed with Crab A disease. Um, and it took us about nine months to get that formal diagnosis. To begin with, Reagan was the perfect child. I mean, however you want to define perfect, she, she absolutely was. Um, and maintained that status for about four months, although she was extremely colicky. Um, and so that was really kind of the first big sign that something just wasn't quite right. Yeah. Then we moved from colicky into um, very rigid tone. And once we hit the tone piece, that clearly identified that we had a problem. The day of her diagnosis was very cold. Like it was just, the feeling in the room was cold. So we were sitting there, the doctor, the neurologist entered the space. He had another person with him. Um, we got the diagnosis. It's Crab A disease. It's, there's nothing you can do. Take her home, make her comfortable. I would say the entire process was about 10 minutes and then we were left to walk out the door. The internet became my best friend. Sure. I was sorting out what we could do, what we couldn't do, at what point um, were we locked into to this terminal sure. um, illness. Learned about some doctors, we learned about um, some people that could maybe help us navigate what was gonna happen with Reagan, um, but we also just met a lot of families that had lived it. Mm -hmm. And that was probably the biggest blessing of all, was to talk and interact with people who truly understood the path I was about to walk down. Crab sure, sure. A kids are very sound sensitive. They don't like to be held a lot. Um, when they are held, it needs to be in a specific positioning. A lot of extra equipment that goes with their care. We did a lot of more quiet style activities. Um, you know, we would go to the parks, we would lay outside on blankets, we would um, spend a lot of time just cuddling on the couch. Um, we had a hot tub available at our house. Um, we just kept the temperature low for her and that was probably one of the most relaxing things on her body. My friend Zoe here was definitely not planned. Now with that being said, absolutely incredible, wouldn't change it for a second. Um, but not in the plan at all. I was kind of taken back a little bit and for whatever reason, as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I felt like something was wrong. And I don't have any evidence to back the what's or the why's, but my gut just said something wasn't right. Okay. Um, so because of that, we did pursue an early amnio and we did that at 10 weeks. Um, we had a formal diagnosis within less than a month later of that. And it did unfortunately come back positive for Crab A. Um, but because of Reagan and because of her pathway and meeting up with all these families and meeting all these other amazing kids, we kind of knew what our options were now. Um, we could do nothing and we could get the same end result or we could pursue this umbilical cord blood transplant um, and give her hope for, uh, for having a, a future life. So we went ahead and relocated down to Duke um, and we lived there for a little over a year. We again, amazing people in our lives. Um, we were given a, an apartment to stay in during that entire time that we did not have to pay for, which to this day continues to blow my mind. Uh, we spent 42 days inpatient, um, waiting for her to engraft. I spent most of the time in the hospital with Zoe, older child, was looked after by my parents in Iowa. We were in North Carolina and we were flying every week back and forth. Once she was officially released and doing well enough, then we went ahead and relocated back to Iowa. 
Probably the biggest piece that we fight through and continue to fight through is the tightness and spasticity. Um, it's mainly in her lower extremities. Her legs are definitely more impacted than any other part of her body. Um, and that has caused um, some issues with her gait and with her walking patterns. So recently we did decide to go ahead and do two pretty intense surgeries in order to straighten out and to relocate some of the muscle groupings in her legs to get everything just better aligned um, to help her mobility. She gained almost 10 inches through surgery as far as when she stands and true, you know, can truly make herself upright. What was the surgery process for you, Zoe? What did you yeah. think of it? I was nervous at both. What made you nervous? Yeah. Afraid that I would not be able to walk again. Mm -hmm. Did that happen? No. Do you feel stronger? You do? Yeah. Are you pleased with your results from surgery? Yeah. If someone asked you what Crabbe disease is, what would you tell them? I would say that it's a missing brain enzyme and that I can't like, like I take a long time to know like what questions come. Yeah. What do you think is the most frustrating part for you? That people don't understand what I'm going through and they don't really open the door for me. What do you want after you graduate from high school? I was thinking of getting a job and moving out someday. So as you look for, forward to the future, places you want to go, things you want to see, like what, if you had on your mind, what's some place you want to go see? I want to go to Paris someday. Paris. What's intriguing to you about Paris? The Eiffel Tower. Are there anything that you want others to know about you as a person? I like to help people and I'm a social butterfly. But she's just a ray of sunshine. She uh, is is very willing to um, advocate for herself. Like I will often check in with her, and I'll say, I "Say Zoe, this is what we're going to be, um, you know, evaluating tomorrow. Uh, what do you feel ready to show me that you know?" So, like, we might choose uh, instead of needing to know seven different qualities of newsworthiness, yeah. she might say, let, let me focus on these three or four, you know, so, so yes. we've worked out things like yes. that yes. to, um, to help, um, help Zoe show us what she knows and can do, which right. is a lot. Right. She has a paraeducator who works with her, but uh, at the beginning of this school year, Amber told me uh, they're really working on Zoe's independence, and so not to rely too much on the paraeducator and just last week we met and had a discussion that I don't think that she really needs the paraeducator in the room anymore. We take a lot of active steps to help promote her independence. You know when there's something that she wants to do then rather than me stepping in and doing it for her then we talk about figuring out how to make that work for her. Um, you know if she wants to help cook dinner absolutely get in here let's do this let's figure it out. We really have just decided that no isn't an answer for us. Can't doesn't exist. We just have to find a different way sometimes, mm -hmm. and we work really hard to do that. But most of the time, it's pretty simple. I mean, the things that we have to do aren't much different from what you do with normal children. We give examples, we teach, we model, we provide opportunities for practice. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we have her order her own food when we go places. Uh, she wants to go downstairs here at the house. She's got a chair, man. Like, you go, have fun. Um, she's working on driving a side-by-side -side now. And so that's one big piece. Um, driving is something that she does want to, to try to figure out. Nothing should limit her, especially with the technologies that exist and the the equipment that exists in the world today. She can do whatever she wants. And we'll just figure out how to help her with it. Yeah.